I'm Joe Strange. I'm the new marshal in town. I got the hat, got the number. And let me tell you a little bit about the crimes and the, and the justice the followed. In a, in a kind of a rambling story known as Space Aliens Hide My Drugs. Now, you fuck with some people, you don't want to hide their drugs. <laughs> you really, really don't want to hide their drugs, and especially you don't want to put them in prison for three years and torture them while hiding their drugs. Now, this, the, the Space Aliens Hide My Drugs was originally intended to be and started off as a written document. Uh, the autobiography of a fellow named C.J. Parker, who died a couple of times, but just kept getting goddamn resurrected. You know, he well, he died at the end of the Xenix Chainsaw Massacre. He got resurrected for Web World and Mythical Circle of Eunuchs and for Infowars. But he was tortured in prison for three years, and, and you know what, what's funny is they tried to break him. <laughs> they tried to break him, and they thought they didn't. But they broke him. He, he can't write no more. But he can babble. <laughs> he can babble on endlessly. And, and you don't really want a guy babbling on endlessly when he knows a little too much. Do you know what I mean? And especially if all the things he's babbling about, which may be crimes he has committed, all happened over seven years in the past. So you can't touch him. Can't touch him at all. Well, legally. We know how far that legally stuff goes. I, I, I can tell you about the Ninth Circus Court. Now you got a judge who can sit there and listen to a defendant scream when he's denied his constitutional rights to represent himself. Who can listen to that defendant scream, get me the fuck out of here. I'm not participating in this bullshit. Now, a federal judge is somehow able to have the defendant removed from the courtroom, bring him back in, and threaten to bring him in in chains to attend the trial, the show trial. But threaten to drag him in in chains to attend the trial because he didn't have, want nothing to do with it. If he can't have his constitutional right to defend himself, and after threatening, to physically drag the defendant in with chains, then uh, he can justify, he can justify to the appeals courts how he denied the defendant the right to represent himself on the basis that the defendant was equivocal in his request. <laughs> so the law, I mean, hey, the law is what they're making. Now, that made him a criminal. It did. I mean, that's among just a million other things. To have a show trial. And that didn't matter so much to the defendant because it left him free to write his motions to the courts and always refer to the court as the Ninth Circus Court. <laughs> and nobody would ever say boo because they were ignoring the fucking fact he was there. <laughs> it didn't exist. They pointed a a public defender who would touch himself, touch himself when the defendant talked about the torture he was undergoing, which made sense after the defendant got out and did a web search, found out that his public defender uh, was into the bondage side. So, so, I mean, they had to have so much on this guy. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> uh, 
the defendant was finally <laughs> allowed to represent himself when he wrote a motion to to represent himself that started off, Judge, if the prosecutor doesn't have a picture of the public defender with his hand on some child's pants in a public restroom, I'll kiss your ass. <laughs> All of a sudden, now, now this was a su su successful motion to the court. Now, now, uh, this is the one that worked. <laughs> so you can read what you want. All the legal arguments, all things saying, Constitution, you know, prayer and all that. Mm -mm. No, but you say, you know, this guy, the prosecutor's got a picture of this guy with his hand down some child's pants in a public restroom. That's a good, valiant argument. And finally, I got, I, I got, I got my wish to represent myself, which this was after I'd been convicted. No doubt. Uh, after having a lawyer forced on me, you used an argument I'd already rejected. Uh, and uh, did all kinds of court proceedings without consulting me and even against my declared wishes. But, I mean, he, he had represented that guy from Canada that, uh, you know, some guy had, they had fertilizer in his car because he was a gardener. And he was Iranian. And they just threw his ass, and, they, and they, this is the same guy they appointed to make sure he didn't get out and didn't get any kind of real legal representation. <laughs> well, so, now when, when you got a judge that cuts the prosecutor off every, every time, they got like six or eight charges filed. And now when the judge cuts the prosecutor off, whenever he starts to talk about the defendant's continual Actions, which would mean, no, this, this could be covered by one charge if it's continual. When the judge, every time the, 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 the prosecuting attorney uses a continual, if the judge cuts them off, says, hey, how about them bears? And that's why we've been having, well, hey, there's no secret what's going on. And, and when, when the defendant says the prosecutor threatened me illegally and unethically with bogus charges, to get me to cop a plea, and you ask, you say, come on, let's see that original plea agreement. Well, it turns out the prosecutor doesn't have a copy. The judge says, okay, he doesn't have a copy. Well, how about the public defender? Oh, lost my copy. So the judge could sit there and say, oh, well, gee, here's a crime that's claimed to be committed, and the evidence it's actually court documents, but everybody, everybody lost their copy. Hey, no, done deal, nothing here. Move along, folks, nothing to see here. No, nothing at all. <laughs> we lost everything that was there to see. Now, that's got to be a little clue that something's going on. Hey, and here, here, hey, you want to participate in a little group participation thing? We're all going to laugh. Now pretend you just heard a prosecutor and a judge and public defender wonder whether the richest man in the world is going to show up at the trial being held in, in, in his name to squash this little fucker like a goddamn bug. Let's all laugh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, fuck that, yeah, right, like that's going to happen. Nope. <laughs> We're going to fuck this guy silly. Use this guy's name to do it. He don't need to be here, no. He's too big and fucking important. Yeah, we don't, we don't need that. Instead, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to have some guys show up that when they're questioned by the defendant, <laughs> claim they don't know anything about computers or operating system or nothing. They're clueless bastards. Don't, don't know nothing about nothing. Yeah, but their testimony will be heard. And you got a judge who, when, when the prosecutor asks, asks the defendant's brother, did you do this? And he said, no, I don't remember doing this. And the prosecutor says, well, is it the kind of thing you would have done? And he says, yes. They go, see? And the judge says, okay, kind of thing you would have done. Yeah, done fucking deal. 
there's some clues left behind. And and it's not like it was a, you know, it's not like it was a couple guys. I mean, I remember when I was going to get the lawyer to kill, be killed last, Larry, Larry Joe Dallin from Austin, Texas. I was wanting to put in a call to that man to take care of me at that trial. Well, they took me up to the phone, said, okay, you can call your lawyer. I called Larry Joe's office, said, let me speak to Larry Joe, the lawyer to be killed last. Larry said, he's not here right now. You know, he's out of the office. But okay, I'll, I'll call back later. I hung it up. The guard says, you ready to go back to your cell? I says, no, I'll, I'll wait a while and call again. And the guard says, look, he's going to be in court all fucking morning. There's no use in, use in waiting. And I'm sitting there thinking, they phoned to make sure he wasn't going to be available before they brought me up to call him. <laughs> yeah, it's not like everybody's in on this. No, no. Not like the guy who, who when I, I, I kept it, every time I insist on my right to go to trial, my right to defend myself, I'd have these people, <laughs> I'd have these people doing strange things, like coming up to me out of the fucking blue, a lieutenant in the shoe in the fucking hole, man, telling me all about how they just found six grams of heroin in this, this woman's vagina, and, you know, and uh, they sure hoped I wasn't connected with that, because I could do a lot of time if I was connected. And there's a million things. And this this judge, this judge thinks he's gonna hold a sham fucking trial with violate all the constitutional rights, you know, under the slimmest of pretexts that a defendant has, and then go teach a little law class down at the university and play the big time, hey, you know, pure white fucking justice is going to teach him about the law, and he thinks that none of those people who are supporting this bullshit, that none of their family and friends are going to take it in the ass, like my family and friends did. Well, excuse me. <laughs> well, excuse me. You're going to find out how and when. This judge through his friends, his family, and his associates, paid for his crimes. You're going to find that out right here on the video version of Space Aliens Had My Drugs. <laughs>